Welcome back to the wet coast. In a few weeks, I'm gonna be doing an off-roading trip on a famous BC trail called Whipsaw, and I'm gonna be taking the Path Grinder. This is my 2008 Nissan Pathfinder that I've heavily modified for off-roading. And to get ready for that trip, I've got a bunch of stuff I need to do, and I'm gonna start with taking off the bumper. And the reason why I need to do that is servicing my winch, which is tucked under there. The other thing I wanna do is make a remote handle for the engage, disengage lever here. And this is a pain in the butt when you're on the trail to get your hand down in there and disengage it so you can pull the winch line out. And believe me, with a Nissan Pathfinder, I've had plenty of opportunity to need to pull myself out of trouble with the winch. But what I did is I took an existing X-Bull 13K winch and I turned it into a hidden winch behind my ARB bumper. And it works great, it's out of the way. It's hard to steal, but getting to that lever is a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna do that now while I've got a bit of daylight. I think this bash plate has been thoroughly bashed. I'll make a new one out of heavier gauge plate. All right, time to bring in the heavy guns and lift this 200 plus pound bumper off the front of the Pathfinder. She looks pretty naked without the bumper on. That's a sight that would take some getting used to. Ready to go tomorrow morning, first thing. Gonna start working underneath. Gonna clean up, put everything away, and tomorrow is another day. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do on the path grinder is install an automatic locker in the front differential. So I get a little more traction when I'm trying to keep up with the Jeeps. This is an automatic lunchbox style locker. I bought it out of Australia and it uh, should just fit right in the front uh, differential. But the downside to that is I have to take the front differential out of the path grinder. Not a job for the faint of heart, but it's not a difficult job either. So I'm gonna get started. It's getting a little late. I don't have a lot of daylight left, so time to get to it. Now I have to take apart the suspension. I'm just gonna undo the upper ball joints to start and hopefully get the half shafts out. But first I need to drain the differential. It's just this 10 millimeter hex plug here. I'm gonna go get my tool and pull that plug out and let it drain into the pan. Past Chris put anti seize on this. Thank you, Past Chris. It's hammer time. I don't want to wreck my ABS sensor. Pull that out. Should have done that first, but I didn't. is out. I'm going to do the other side. Okay, I have both half shafts uninstalled. I hope that doesn't mean I'm going to get the full shaft when I crawl under there now to take out the differential. Taking out the differential and this little stub axle here, I don't know, housing, whatever this is, is pretty straightforward. All I got to do is drop this cross member. There's four bolts, one on, two on this side, two on this side. I need to disconnect the drive shaft from the differential. This is easy, it's just four bolts holding it on. Up front, there's this one big ass bolt here and there's this little breather hose that should come off. I haven't put the snap ring back on and that was bad. Anyways, that's done. That was the easiest part. Time to start disconnecting stuff. And the four bolts that hold the drive shaft in, it just pops right off, no problem. Now I'm just gonna take the actual heavy bolts for the, for the front differential. There's one here. There's one tucked around the side here somewhere. And there's that one right there. That should be pretty easy. This thing is surprisingly not that heavy. 
It's certainly not light, but if you've got a bit of upper body strength, you could manage this yourself, I think. But I'll leave that up to you. Now, I'm not taking that all the way out yet until I get the other one undone, and then I can just kind of hinge it down gently and then pull it all out. an R180 differential ready to be opened up and have some walkers put in it but that's for tomorrow because it's getting dark and I'm tired tomorrow's another day and just like that it's another day so while I have the differential out and most of the front end apart anyways I'm gonna do a couple other maintenance items that have been on my list I'm gonna replace the upper ball joints I've got some new parts from Rock Auto here there's nothing terribly wrong with the ones that are in there now but I have noticed that this one is starting to leak oil a little bit so I know it's probably on its way out and I'd rather not have that fail when I'm on the trail the other thing I'm gonna do is replace the front brake pads because they're down to about two or three millimeters. So while I've got it apart, I might as well replace the parts and that means I'm doing my part. So let's get to it. Don't let your caliper hang by the brake hose because these things are heavy and you can damage your brake hose. So don't do it. Just use a piece of wire or rope or something and hang it off the chassis or even something on the suspension. These two little clips just pop out. And then so do the brake pads. Yeah, that's pretty worn. Not a lot left on that. And these come out. There'll be a hardware kit and a good quality brake pad replacement package that has all the hardware in it. And that's the difference between the old and the new. I've seen on certain car videos on YouTube that mechanics sometimes get customers bringing their cars in complaining their brakes aren't working or they're really loud because the pad has actually been installed backwards usually by a relative so make sure you put the pad facing the disc there'll be a wear tab that will start making noise once the brake pad wears down to that point this starts to rub on the on the rotor itself and it starts making a sound and that's when you, you know it's time to replace your brake pads the old ones didn't have it they'll usually go on the back pad but you know check your manual or just check how it actually fits. So they're gonna go like that, but I've gotta put the brake adjustment or abutment clips, what they're called, back in there. One goes in there. Kinda just slide them in, there's these little Springs. And it holds the brake pad, stops it from rattling. Let's see how it holds the brake pad in place and just doesn't allow it to rattle around. These little guys go back in here. thing that you need to do now that you have all this extra thickness is you have to squeeze the caliper pistons back into the caliper so you'll be able to get the caliper back on I've never done it with Nissan calipers before but it's worked in the past with a lot of other brake calipers I've done brake service on And 
then I'll just do it to the other one. Okay, I've got both pistons compressed in now with the C-clamp. One thing I want to mention, before you move the vehicle, after you've done your brakes, after you've pushed those pistons in, start your engine, pump your brakes a few times because those pistons have to close up any gap. You'd be in for a rude surprise the moment you start moving if you haven't done that because your brake pedal is going to go to the floor and you'll fly right through a stop sign. Ask me how I know this. All right, ball joint replacement time. I've already popped it loose, as you saw earlier. I just undid the nut and gave a thing a few good whacks and it popped out. Now I'm actually gonna let the steering knuckle hang down. I'm gonna push the upper control arm a little bit and then I'm gonna use my impact wrench and the ball joint removal kit to push the old ball joint up and out. There's a C-clip under here that needs to come out first and then you can just push it right out. That goes on like that. So as it pushes the ball joint out, it goes into this sleeve here. The smaller one fits under and will push, at least pop it out enough that I can get it out. And that part's gonna go like that. And then this big beast fits all together like that. All right, if I've done this right, I'll get the impact wrench on the bottom and just loosen it all up and take it apart. Okay, so I gave it a quick sand inside just to clean out any debris and rust and cleaned it with a bit of brake cleaner, make it nice and spot free. And I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize in there, just insert a little easier as well as to prevent rust if possible. Time to reverse this process. All right, here goes the new one. All right, here goes nothing. Putting that in there temporary like and get the C-clip in there. All right, that is in and done. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, I've got this driver's side upper ball joint replaced. I'm gonna do the other one off camera as well as the other brakes off camera. There's no point in you watching those twice. And after that, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. All right, so working on my differential, I discovered I needed a part for it and I've got that in order. It's gonna be a few days before it gets here. So in the meantime, I'm gonna work on some other stuff. And right now I'm gonna fix a radiator hose that's got a pinhole leak in it. So this is the coolant line from the radiator to the heater core inside the vehicle. And I have a pinhole leak right here. And it's when the engine is at temperature and the system's under pressure, I have a constant stream of a very fine mist of coolant spraying up here, dripping down on the engine, and it stinks. And I'm gonna fix that now. I'm gonna go on a little mini rant here for a second. These things are made out of plastic, and they age, and they crack, and they fail. You have to buy a really expensive replacement part. All right, first thing I need to do is disconnect the two bolts that hold this hose to the firewall. Those are just 10 millimeter nuts on there. Undo this clamp here, undo this clamp there. And there's a similar thing on the other side over there, which I will do, and then I'll get the new line in. But first I need to drain the radiator a little bit. See how that part just broke right off? That's how fragile this plastic fitting is. It just snapped off with me trying to pull the hose off. Easy. All right, so opening up the, the Dorman replacement hose. See Dorman on there. What they have done is they've replaced that plastic fitting on the crappy Nissan product with an actual aluminum one. So all it is here is just a bit of hose just like what's on there and no plastic fitting to fail. Has the same hose on the back end. You can see the old original one and the new Dorman one is identical. Comes with a new clamp on the end of there. I look for these kind of details when I'm shopping. This is a rock, this comes from Rock Auto made by Dorman. You gotta look for this kind of stuff because you can buy the original Nissan one for about 50 bucks more, but why would you want to go through the same hassle? I don't. Time to put the new one in. I won't bother recording it because it's just the reverse of what I did taking the old one out. And then put the coolant back in the cooling system. All right, there's the new Dorman hose all installed, all connected and leak proof. Or at least not leaking right now. 
Okay, I'm happy I've got that hose repaired. Let's go to the back of the path grinder. I'm going to replace the differential oil in the rear differential. Okay, to change out the rear differential fluid, you'll need to remove the drain plug that's here. And up in here is actually the fill plug. And you're going to need one of these 10 millimeter hex sockets. Plugs in and you can undo it, but I'm going to clean this first. Don't want to lose this washer. I'll check the end of this to see if there's anything, big metal particles or anything. No, just normal sludge, normal wear. So the next thing to do is to fill that differential with some quality differential fluid. I'm using a decent synthetic 8890, you can do 8840, I think is another one that's valid. Uh, just check the Nissan manual for your year if you're going to do this and see what they recommend. And another thing that really helps with this job is a fluid transfer pump. It's so much easier to pump this stuff in rather than trying to get a bottle up there and pour this maple syrup thick oil in there, which does not taste as good as maple syrup. I'll tell you that right now. Don't ask how I know. All right, I'm going to load this up now. Once it starts coming out the hole, you know you've got it filled up enough. Should be about two liters or I think just under two quarts. And that's that. Pretty simple. Gonna move on to my next task now. I'm back with the differential and it's raining. I got the locker installed. If you're interested in seeing that, I've got a link to that video in the description down below or up in the corner. One of these corners. I don't know. I'm going to get this differential installed. I'm not going to record it because it's getting late. I'll be working in the dark and it's literally just the reverse of me taking it out, which you've already seen. So I won't bore you with that. I'm just going to get it done because I want to get this locker tested. So I'll see you in a few minutes. It's the next day. The rains have stopped. And last night I got the axle with the new locker installed and it works. Next thing I need to do is take care of this bumper, get the winch select figured out I'm going to do that now and then get this bumper back on the path grinder. What I need to do is move the winch clutch handle from here to somewhere up here so I don't have to reach through this hole and awkwardly try to get the winch to engage and disengage when I need to pull the winch line out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some quarter inch socket fittings, two universal joints and a shaft, and I'm going to make an adapter for the winch here and I'm going to remount the handle somewhere up here. I'm going to make a plate that sits here and the handle should come through around something like that. Now I just have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Okay, so this is, it's like a, a double D. And I think what I can do, the piece of stock metal, I can drill a hole, put in a set screw on either side, and then make an adapter for that to sit on with a square hole in it. So I just need a block of metal that's about half an inch thick. Let's see what I've got in my inventory. And then when it comes out here, that could be just as simple as a tight fitting sleeve over that. I've got some round stock that I think I'm gonna use. It's a little overkill, but it's gonna give me lots of meat to put in some set screws to clamp on top of that shaft into the winch. Not a cut a piece off. I've drilled a 10 millimeter hole about halfway through on one side and the other side is a quarter inch hole that I'm going to use a file to square out that will fit the actual universal socket. And that's how you get a square peg into a round hole. You make the hole square. Now I'm just going to drill two holes for the set screws on either side and the adapter is done. Okay, so the adapter on the winch clutch is drilled, tapped, loctited, and screwed. So the universal adapter will come down and it'll just pop right in like that. And then I'll be able to turn it with the handle. Now to make the upper section. Doesn't look bad at all if I do say so myself. Okay, now I need to figure out where I'm gonna make a hole for this to come through. I'm also gonna have to shorten this shaft and then 
regrind the quarter inch square on it to figure out where it should come out. Uh, you know, maybe just in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna do it in the middle. It's gonna come out there. Well, it sure does look pretty, doesn't it? I'm happy with the way it turned out, except it doesn't work. I think this angle is too steep for the universal joints, so it is just binding up. If I try to turn it, nothing. It's locked. Yep, just in too sharp of an angle for those little U-joints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relocate the hole probably right about here, like as close to the opening in the bumper under here that I can get it, and just really shorten the shaft up so that it's gonna be much more vertical rather than at such a steep angle. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I'll get it fixed. Well, this has been a beautiful failure. In the end, there's just too much slop in these little universal joints. The amount of torque and twisting I need, it just ends up binding itself up, even when it's a much shallower angle. I drilled a new hole, put a new sleeve in there, and I've got it as firm as I can, but it's just not gonna work. Sometimes things don't go the way I plan, maybe most times. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'll pull this all apart. I can do a straight shot from the adapter that I have here, run this right out, maybe this hole here on the bumper. Um, then there'll be absolutely no flexing or anything. It's just going to be essentially a straight shaft right down to the adapter and then I can fabricate a little handle that's going to work on there. Bummer. This was fun, but not going to work. I've made the new winch clutch handle. It's not pretty, but it's functional. So I took the top part of one of the extensions and cut it and shaped it to fit in the adapter that I had made and put a little bit of JB weld in there just to hold it firmly in place which allows my little handle to be held firmly in place because this has the little retaining ball in there, as does this, it's all formed. I couldn't make something like that without a lot of work. So it goes in, it clicks into place. It's available for me to use when I'm off-roading. No worries about that actually bouncing out because you have to really, really pull it and it works. Look at that. You can engage the winch, disengage the winch. Well, actually that's backwards, but you get the idea. I can now, easily engage and disengage this winch clutch so I can pull the winch line out when I need to use it, which is more often than not having an independent suspension on the path grinder. But that uh, locker is gonna help with that. Time to get this bumper installed and do some off-roading. Well, the path grinder is all back together and ready to go play in the forest. Bumper is on, clutch control is ready to go, skid plates are back on. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.